Then Audrey, my wife, left me and took the kids. We could have patched it up, I know we could. If it hadn't been for the car accident. <laughs> then this morning, I had a letter from the clinic. The tests are positive. <laughs> Apparently, I've only got a few months left to live. Anyway, enough about me. The bride and groom. Tomorrow. Built for today. Mitsutoshi unveiled. The snail. Design breakthrough on wheels. The snail goes nowhere. Fast. Powerless engine drives automatic rocker arm. Two speed wipers for maximum vision. Magnetic chest to while away the hours. Padded support pillars, cushion, you will spare. All this, plus a revolutionary time-filling concept in motoring technology. The Mitsutoshi Bonsai Garden. And when nature calls, the snail has the answer. The snail. It's the car for you. And everybody else. The snail. It's the crap car of the mountains. Come on. You're not to blame. Alex, tell him. I've only just heard. So what happened? It's David. He's had a terrible road accident in town. Yes, there are some terrible roads in town. Was he... was he wearing clean underwear? <laughs> Come on, it's not your fault. A van came out of the side street next to the supermarket and David drove his bike straight into it. Why? <laughs> Why what? Why did he drive his bike into the supermarket? He didn't drive it into the supermarket, he drove it into the van. Oh. An hour ago he was sitting here with us, and now he's lying in a hospital in a critical condition. Hospitals are in a critical condition. I blame the government myself. No, 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 it's our son David is in a critical condition. Oh. The doctor doesn't hold out much hope. He's got massive brain damage. And he's still working as a doctor. These doctors deserve a medal. No, no. Him. David has got massive brain damage. Not the doctor. Oh. They're operating on him right now. They told us to come home and make some tea and then they'll ring us when it's finished. When will they know that you've finished your tea? When they've finished the operation. Oh. <laughs> Doctor said if he pulls through, he'll probably live life as a cabbage. <laughs> what sort of cabbage? What sort of cabbage? A spring cabbage? A savoy? Neil, this is difficult enough for us already. No, no, no. It, it's just that if he's a spring cabbage, you'll have to plant him in limey soil and your garden... <laughs> your garden's very acidic, you know. Neil! I blame myself! It's all my fault! No, there, there, Helen. It's not your fault. All the gardens around here are acidic. <laughs> it's something to do with the soil, you see. Neil! Please, we'd rather be on our own just now. Thank you. 
I understand. Look, if there's anything more I can do, I'm just yeah. next door. You won't forget. Will no, you? fine. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> he means well, but Neil can be so thick at times. I mean, when we said David was going to be a cabbage, he thought we were going to keep him in the garden. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to get the best of care. David's going to be a cabbage. We're going to keep him in the fridge. <laughs> If we told you that Dan Quayle is a member of Mensa, we wouldn't be telling the whole truth. We said that Jason Donovan could sing. We find it hard to believe. But you know we're telling the truth when we say that Carlsberg is probably the finest lager in the world. Something started happening in your jeans. Fell in the shower, you were so proud because the PE teacher cried out loud. You'll soon be a man, you know. Cause you've got the curly hair on your vodio Everybody stopped to stare at your very first pubic hair. What is this thing all about? When your dinky crinkly winkle is revealing That something's starting to sprout Carly Wally, Carly Wally Of your one pubic hair You were so shy And very reluctant to open your fly Never wanted to strip Cause every time you sneeze It cracked like a whip Adolescents don't make sense When you're in bed Making a tent But Lord knows you're a lucky pup When two things drop And another pops up It's that grotty, spotty, botty Kind of feeling Your skin's like an old apple's cake And your totally yodely vocal Is revealing That you're going to Starting to break. What magazine under my bed, mummy? Don't worry, cause every man since time began has found puberty weird. Even Aristotle reached for the bottle when he found that his willy had a beard. And everybody stopped to stare at the first Greek pubic hair. It's that curly, burly, curly, whirly feeling It's what puberty's all about When your dinky, crinkly, winkle is revealing That something's starting to sprout So don't worry if you're just 13 Cause when you're old, it has to be sad you have curly hairs all over your body But none on top of your head A game of cricket at the East Malden Cricket Club. A typical game of cricket you can watch on any village green. Typical, that is, apart from one aspect. In this match, East Malden don't use cricket balls. Instead, they use live frogs. <laughs> Well, uh, we changed the frogs to liven the game up a bit. You see, 
a frog is ideal for spin boat, especially leg spin. I mean, you just can't tell where it's going to go. And it poses similar problems for the field of And they've contributed to a great increase in the scoring. The only problem when using frogs is the variable quality. Some of them just aren't up to it. Go frog! The sound of frog on willow has abated and the players retire to the confines of their social club. The RSPCA complain and say it's not cricket. Well, neither is this, but it's bloody good fun. from accounts um what's his name what shall i do just nod or, or say something or what oh dear it's him from sales we've never spoken but i've seen him around now do i walk past and pretend i don't know him or should i acknowledge him somehow i'll just say hello but what if he ignores me i'm gonna look a right prat i know i'll just smile and nod no no better not do that he might think i'm gay <laughs> should i shake hands with him better not I've just been to the loo and washed my hands. They don't try. He might think I've piddled them. I'll speak first. I'll just say, hi, how are you? Oh, I wish I were dead or drunk. It's easier to speak to strangers when you're drunk, but, but what the hell do you say when you're stone cold sober? I'll just make eye contact and nod, I think. Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? Eye contact and nod. I contact and nod. Say it now. Say it now. I'm, I'm, um... I'll do that. I'll do it. I'll do it. So, the Chancellor's latest mini-budget. Lots in this speech for everybody, some good, some bad. So, to find out how this affects us all, let's go over to Gareth. Gareth, a 5p drop in the basic rate of income tax. How does this affect the average family? Well, let's have a little look, shall we? Right, oh, average family, two children still at school, a dog, a car... <laughs> well, they're a staggering £1.23 a week better off. And what about the uh, not-so-average family? Right, let's have a look. Uh, Mum, Dad, uh, seven kids. Seven kids? <laughs> and a Sky satellite dish. <laughs> They've bought their own council home. Uh, two cars, neither of which are taxed. <laughs> both drink, both smoke. Holiday in Torremolinos. <laughs> Play loud music, have a huge dog that annoys the neighbours. <laughs> Yorkshire stone cladding in the middle of Crawley. <laughs> And Dad constantly shouting things like, Raymond, get back in this house or I'll tan your ass." <laughs> well, they are 87 pence a week worse off. Mind you, I don't suppose they give a damn, do they? <laughs> what about the, um, single man's allowance? Right, OK. Let's have a look-see. A single man. Right. No kids, no mortgage, no ties. Good job, flash car. <laughs> Nice clothes, goes out every night, drinks, smokes, has a really good time, string of girlfriends. And is he any better off? Of course he is the lucky sod. <laughs> now, the uh, Chancellor has uh, come down quite heavily on perks, the sort of <clears throat> things we can claim or can't claim against tax. Where does this leave the self-employed? OK, man, 30 to 40 years of age, Recently divorced, fairly high income, alcohol problem, smokes too much, <laughs> he's getting a bit tubby, <laughs> might be dressed as lamb, can't get it up anymore, <laughs> combs his hair over his bald patch, <laughs> thinks all the girls in the office fancy him, in fact they call him the slug, <laughs> occasionally wears women's underwear. <laughs> well, good news, Norman, you're five pounds a week better off. Hello, Norm. 
Hello, Norman. <laughs> you what? <laughs> Norman, you're not still in a mood over what I said to you at rehearsals, are you? <laughs> well, it's absolutely true. Occasionally, you stumble over your words as if you were dyslexic. Sometimes, you do get your lines mixed up. <laughs> By the way, has it stopped raining? <laughs> to be honest, sometimes your timing is way out. <laughs> and half the time you're looking at the wrong camera, Really clumsy with props. <laughs> no, no. I think this is all a little bit juvenile, don't you? Come on, we're grown men. Talk to me. Yeah, you're right, Gareth. I'm being a bit stupid, I suppose. Yeah, I mean it's it's ridiculous, ridiculous and childish. Yeah, I suppose we ought to be able to criticise each other without falling out. Hmm? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, after all, <laughs> you're not exactly brilliant yourself, are you? I mean, you're terrible at remembering your lines. <laughs> I mean, you're terrible at remembering your lines. What do you mean? Fifi Trixie Bell, Anna, Cordless, Louisa, you can catch me on the mobile, and Jamie. <laughs> me and Jim just been to the Nelson Mandela concert and it cost us 50 quid for the ticket. Yeah, 50 quid a ticket. That bloke wants looking up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Nigel, hello. Hello. Welcome to Sweden. I hope you'll be happy during your stay with us. Thank you, Lottie. Uh, please be coming in. Jan is in the living room. <laughs> this is Jan, my husband. <laughs> Jan, this is Nigel, hello. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the first leg of the exchange. Oh. That's a nice painting. <laughs> At least you made it okay. The roads in Sweden can be how you say. A right bugger. Oh. <laughs> yes. Okay. You like the painting? It is Lottie. She is the artist of the family. It's very clever. Oh, yes. I'm very good at the ceramics. Look at the handle on this. <laughs> Very nice. But like all artists, she can be a little crazy, you know? <laughs> Jan, I think you embarrass our guests. I'm sorry. Now tell me, have you noticed any major differences between Sweden and England? 
bigger. Wider. Wider. Well, that's a lovely view. Out of the window, I mean. Yes, we are very lucky here. Maybe after I show you, take you for a drive in the Volvo, have a crash, it's perfectly safe. <laughs> Too lonesome. Too lonesome. <laughs> yeah, and I think our guests would prefer to relax after their journey and take a sauna with us. <laughs> a sauna? Uh, no, <laughs> I, I, we haven't bought our cousins. <laughs> Your wife, Nigel, she has a big sense of humor, I'm thinking. <laughs> and also, she likes to rub the wild goat's milk into her private parts, yes? <laughs> Nigel, do you and Helen ever live out each other's sexual fantasies? Personally, I like the dress in his clothing. Makes me feel so good, so sexy. How about you? Society. So we moved to the house in West Didsbury. Because it had a bigger garden. Yeah, no, it's very interesting, <laughs> Helen. Do you achieve orgasm through oral stimulation or during intercourse? <laughs> well, it had a bigger garden, you see. <laughs> I'm a cunnilingus person myself. Really? Well, about since Sweden is that then? <laughs> Nowadays, my erections are so strong, so powerful. <laughs> Nigel, I'm thinking you have trouble maintaining yours. <laughs> Don't worry, I have something in the fridge which may help. <laughs> well, I've had enough of this. So have I. Shall we go? Yes. Oh, my God, it's true what they say about the Swedes. They're, they're so... It's so boring. <laughs> Some people say we're smutty. I don't like being called smutty. And I don't like being called sweet. 